we go. All right, we are recording. Awesome. Okay, we're good. 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 You can hear me okay? Yep. You betcha. All right, okay. I'm going to share my screen and then we'll get going. Thank you so much, Casey, for letting me be on here. It truly is an honor. Honestly, uh, if you would have asked me a couple years ago if I ever saw this for uh, my life, I probably would have laughed in your face. And I think it's just, it's one of those things where I, I just didn't, I just didn't know what was possible until I had to know what was possible. Right. And I'll tell you a little bit about me. So just one second, let me just play this. Um, and then we'll get going. So I'm going to talk about my recipes for success and hitting success club. Cause that's really the foundation of this business, but a little bit about me. I am a mom. I just had my third baby in the at the end of February. Her name's Elliot, so I have Easton, who is eight, Aria, who is three, crazy three-year-old right now, and then little baby Elliot, and it is, it's busy, busy. I started as a hobby coach. I had no intention to ever grow a business. I honestly just signed up uh, to help people. I signed up for my first challenge group, loved it, and I was like, I'm gonna do this just to help people. I didn't buy a challenge pack. So I want you to remember this. I know so many people focus on the sale and they focus on selling something. I was one of those people that I was on maternity leave with Aria. I didn't have money. Okay. So we just bought a bigger home. Didn't have money. I actually signed up for the three payments of 1995 and I didn't want to try Shakeology. I was like, I'm not a shake person. It's way too expensive for me. No, thank you. So I signed up for the three payments in 1995. I messaged Amber Edwards and I was like, okay, can I join your challenge group? And it was, it was her that I saw popping up in my news feeds. And I was like, okay, what the heck is she doing? And I creeped her for a very, very long time. But anyways, don't ever dismiss somebody that doesn't buy a challenge pack from you or starts with Shakeology because uh, it's about helping people. And I'll touch on that later. But I am now a full-time coach. I uh, have been doing this full-time ever since I lost my job. I was fired suddenly from my job. And it was that day on March 26 of 2015 that I decided to go full-on each body, I went completely 100% in. I worked as if my life depended on it because it did at the time. We just bought a bigger home. I just returned back from maternity leave, so I didn't have the option to collect unemployment when I was fired. And we had just started planning our wedding. So it was that day that I went all in as a beach body coach. My husband, Dennis, is home with me full time now. So he came home in February. And that was it was my, my big goal. I was like, I was tired of his shift work. I was tired of him working nights and afternoons and me essentially being a single parent in the evenings when he was gone. And that was my big goal, right? I am a nine star elite. I'm 12, 12 star qualifying. So it's busy, but I'm committed to the business and I'm committed to everybody that I help. And I have an amazing team of coaches, Live Your Life Fitness team, and they truly are 100% committed to helping people and they are in it for the right reasons. So I'm going to tell you what I looked like back then and what I look like now. When I first started, I literally, I didn't even know what a coach really was. I just simply started sharing my journey. <laughs> I look back as the pictures pop up in my newsfeed. I'm like, wow, they're terrible. And I think every coach has to start there because we think, you know, our, our pictures are good, but then they could be so much better. So don't ever think that your pictures are not good enough or that you can't compare. It's a process that took me a long time. Okay. So this was one of my 18 days into the 21 day fix extreme. And I was just simply sharing my journey, right? Just showing, um, showing my journey. And then this is what I, I look like now, right? So obviously my pictures are a little bit better as I've gotten experience of doing what I'm doing, but it, uh, it's funny to see how you grow as a coach. So then, so back then I, like I said, I returned back to work full time when I had Aria, I got up early. Okay. So I got up early, did my workout. I was running little, uh, my first challenge group was with 13 people and I was running it as just fun. I was just having fun. I worked on my lunches. I worked on my breaks and then I worked after the kids went to bed and it didn't even feel like work. Honestly, I was just really having fun with helping people. Okay. Started as a hobby coach, right? I was doing it for fun. I had no, no idea about the business. However, I was 
creeping a lot of top coaches. So I would stay up late in my bed and I would creep people. So I would creep like Lindsay Matway and Melanie Mitro. And I was like watching YouTube videos and it was like seeing Lindsay um, Matway and Melanie Mitro. And it gave me the idea of what was possible in this business. However, I didn't think it was possible for me at that time. I was stressed. I was stressed. I was scattered. I was overloaded with information, right? I was just like, kind of flying by the seat of my pants. I had no set goals. So I was just simply, you know, doing what I was doing. I was focused on the basics initially. So just posting, sharing my journey. I would share before and after pictures kind of thing. Not really being attached to anything, right? Like I made $40 my first week as a coach. And I honestly, I love that because I was like, I was a busy mom that worked essentially to pay daycare. So $40 for me was like, a new shirt every single month, right? So, um, or, or a week, right? I could go get my nails done and it didn't take away from my family. So in my challenge groups, I posted from my bed every single morning, okay? So I would literally sit there and I would look for quotes on Pinterest and I was like, okay, this sounds great. So I would find a quote and post it from my bed, okay? That was how my challenge groups were essentially um, born, right? I was just making up stuff I thought people needed to hear. I didn't do personal development back then, and I cared a lot about what other people thought of me initially, right? I had crappy pictures, and I didn't post with a purpose, okay? So this was month one. This was me starting as a little hobby coach, month one, and then what happened was I was fired from my job at the, the last day of my challenge group, okay? The very, very last day of my challenge group, and I posted in there, and I said, oh my God, I was just fired from my job. Does anybody have any friends that want to join my challenge group? Because I really have no plan B. I will probably lose my home. My kids probably won't be able to eat. Does anybody have any friends? And it was that moment on March 26th that I decided, and that's why they say, you know, read the compound effect, because if you have a strong enough why, you will do whatever the frick it takes to succeed, right? Your kids are in a burning building. You will jump in there right? Your kids will go without food. You will do whatever it takes to be successful. You, um, you're going to lose your house. You'll sell shit to, to make, sh make it work. Okay. So I literally decided to jump that day and all my fears were gone. So now I am a full-time coach. I get up even earlier. Okay. So I, my alarm goes off at four 30 every single morning some days I don't get up at 4.30, some days I get up at 5, but my workout comes first. And I always do my stuff first, okay? Your brain is actually opt is um, functioning at the highest level the first three hours you wake up. So if you are not a morning person, I'm not a morning person. You can become one if you have a strong enough why that gets you going, right? So every single morning I get up. I do my stuff. I do my workout. I do my personal development, right? And then I work after my kids go to bed right now. I have a baby at home, so my, my schedule's scattered, okay? I still stay up late watching YouTube videos, right? I still stay up late watching um, reruns of team calls. I'll do like a social media training. Like I'm constantly learning, but I still do those things to grow my business. Um, I'm doing this for fun and I still work the business. Okay. So this is fun for me. And I think so many coaches lose the joy in it. They forget actually that this business has the potential to be absolutely amazing. Okay. You get to create whatever the heck you want and you can be 100% yourself. And that's the beauty of it. Okay. I'm still scattered. I'm still overloaded with information, but this time I set big monthly goals. So every single month, I write down my goals. So I'll set a success club goal. I will set a rank goal. I will set a personal development goal. I will set a learning goal. So something that I want to learn this month, I'm learning more into Facebook ads, uh, Instagram, like stuff like that stuff that I actually physically need to sit down and learn. I set that. I set like a family goal. I'll set a leadership, uh, like an organization leadership goal, right? stuff that I want to implement in my team. Always set goals every single month. I focus on the basics, okay? So posting three to five times a day, inviting, sharing my journey. That's the basics. That's my, my focus every single day. If I do those things, then I've had a good day as a coach. I manage my time. So I work from a list. So I have my book. I work from a list and I schedule, like I schedule my posts. So uh, I use Buffer, 
I typically go on my, my like page or my fitness page and I will try and schedule posts in advance like recipes or invites to challenge groups or transformation pictures so that they're sitting there so that when I'm busy, I, have, I can just click post and then something will come up on my page, okay? So I focus directly on the tasks that are moving my business forward. I'm not spending a lot of time scrolling mindlessly on Facebook. I really don't have time to read or watch a ton of other coaches' content, okay? I'm just really head down focused on what I'm doing in my own business. I've branded myself, okay? So better pictures, better content. I do my personal development every single day. And I don't really care. I don't give a crap about people and their opinions anymore. I, I care immensely about people. Sorry. But I don't care about their opinions. Okay. Because the reality of the situation is that at the end of your life, you're not going to care about what Susie thinks of your selfies. What you're going to care about is whether or not you lived a full, beautiful, happy life and whether or not you are providing for your family and are doing what you love, okay? So if you're one of those people that are so held back by the opinions of others, then that's a sign that you need to do some personal development big time because eventually, like I said, if it comes down to your family eating or you losing your house, you will do whatever it takes. And I got a lot of, I got a lot of messages from my family members and I got a, me a lot of messages from friends and I've lost quite a few friends. I've unfriended a few friends. And it really is, I find family and friends, <laughs> close ones, that don't get you, right? And that's entirely okay because I'm not doing this for my, my friends. I'm not doing this for my extended family. I'm doing this for myself and for my family. And at the end of the day, that is what truly matters to me, okay? So you have to develop a thick skin because if it means, and I remember my mom messaging me and she said, what are you, what are you doing? My friends are asking about your Facebook pages and you, should, you shouldn't be doing this. And I'm like, you know what, mom? I'm like, if I don't post, my kids don't eat. So I don't care what Janet has to say about my stuff. My kids don't eat if I don't post. And I took it seriously. This is my job, okay? And I post with a purpose every single time on my Facebook page. There's always a purpose to my posts, okay? Um... Okay, I'm just going to check the uh, chat, just to make sure. Okay, so set the stage. So this is what you have to do. Consistency is key, guys. I can't even, like, I tell my team this all the time, and coaches, I can go to their page, and I'm like, okay, if somebody tells you to post three to five times a day, and you're posting once, and you haven't posted since last, since last Sunday, then don't expect your business to be successful. Okay. You need to be consistent posting three to five times a day. It doesn't matter what Susie thinks about your posts. It doesn't matter about what your friends think. Okay. If it annoys them, they can unfollow you. Okay. I've posted every single day, three to five times a day. Sometimes I post eight times a day, uh, on my Facebook page for over two years, I have not taken a day off on my Facebook page and not if, if I am away, I will schedule something, but something's on my Facebook page every single day. Mindset. Your mindset has to change. Okay. So my mindset is, okay, I am changing lives here and someone is counting on me. So when I get up, I share something valuable and I'm like, okay, someone needs to read what I am going to write today. And I, that's my mindset every single day. Comments and likes are not an indication of success whatsoever. Most of my, um, when I am posting about coaching, when I am posting about challenge groups, most of my stuff doesn't get high traction. However, it's usually the, co the, the posts that get the no likes or no comments that I will get tons of messages from. So it's not an indication of your success. People are watching you, okay? Share, share, share. You're not there to sell anything. You're there to share things, okay? So recipes, meals, workouts, content. If you're struggling with content, I honestly, I don't know how that's possible. If you're doing the vital behaviors of a coach and you're drinking your Shakeology, you are doing your workout, you're eating healthy, you're doing your personal development. There's like four things you could talk about in a single day. Okay. If you were a mom, like there's so many things that you could be adding value to, right? Making your kids lunch, take a picture, share what you, you, you made him cooking dinner, take a picture of that and tell them about how important protein is. Um, you know, if you're drinking tea, Google the benefits of green tea and share, share that, right? Like always think about your audience and what they need to hear from you. Your page needs to be of value. Nobody cares that you drink 
chocolate shakes all day, okay? If you're gonna do a selfie with a Shakeology picture, don't just say, oh, I'm getting my breakfast and it's 70 superfoods. Why not Google uh, an ingredient and educate your followers on why you're drinking it or why this is important, okay? So don't just be one of those people that just post selfies that have no purpose to them. You're going to have to think about your followers and the people that are 100% lost in their journey and what is going to help them, okay? Give your stuff away, like your value away for free. The best storyteller wins every single time, hands down. If you are scared to share, your business will likely be here. You will be a fish out of water. You will not be successful. And that is something that you're going to have to, again, get over. And I remember the day that I lost my job and I was hesitant to share things on my social media page because, you know, you care what people think and you're nervous and all that kind of stuff. And that day I said to Dennis, I said, okay, I am just going to start barfing <laughs> stuff on social media. You can read it or you can turn away, but I have to do this, right? Like if it meant between my kids eating and me posting like everybody else tells you to do, it was, it meant I needed to post. Okay. So people are creeping you. So make sure that you live up to what you are offering. Okay. If you're saying that, you know, these workouts are great and I'm looking for 15 people that could, or 10 people that could lose up to 15 pounds in 21 days. And you've been on your journey for a year and are still 50, 60 pounds overweight in the exact same spot you were a year ago, people are not going to believe you. They're not. Okay, so you need to be proof the products work 100%. And if you are not getting results, or if you're not growing as a coach, you need to dial it back into being a challenger, okay? People will not believe you if you've been on your journey and you're posting about, you know, I'm looking for people who are serious, and then you're not taking it serious. You're not doing the vital behaviors. You're not eating healthy. You're not using your portion control containers. You're not being proof the products work, okay? doesn't have to be perfect. What I'm saying is that people are creeping you, okay? So if you're saying you're doing your workout every single day and you're not sharing that, maybe you're sharing it once a week, people won't see that. People won't see a change of why they should join you, okay? Success Club, it really is the bread and butter. And I think the, the month that I lost my job, so I, I lost my job February, March 26, June of 2015, I got 92 Success Club points. 92. And that wasn't running an ad. That was me just busting my butt every single day. I worked as if my life depended on it. And your business is dependent on success club 100%. If you're not hitting success club, your business is not growing. So you either have to start doing more training, start upping your, um, uh, your content on your page, start working harder and longer hours to make it happen. Okay. Like I said, if your kids are going without, you would do whatever it took. Okay. It's a non-negotiable for me every single month. So no success club, there's no momentum and no growth. You have to be posting with a purpose. So jab, 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 and a right hook. Think about your goal and work towards that every single day. So you, um, I am constantly talking about coaching. And this was like, I was talking to a mom today who said she felt um, guilty for taking time to herself. I totally get that. Part of the reason I started working out at home um, was when I was a single mom. And I told a story as to how I can relate to objections that I'm getting and what I did. And that is how I get people every single time. I always make them feel something and then I tell them what I'm doing, but I'm always posting with a purpose attached to it. Um, I talk about like, if I've got a new group starting, like, you know, I say like, I'm, who wants a copy of my weekly meal plan? Comment below or something like that. But I'm always talking and I'm always excited about my challenge groups and I'm planting seeds, right? I'm putting in little jabs, I'm not asking for anything. I'm just sharing about things that I'm doing, okay? So you need to constantly be jabbing them. There's no post, there's no success, okay? Jab, jab, jab for a good week and a half, I would say. So make sure... Um, there must be pictures of you, okay? So share a story, share a tip, share your lifestyle, and ask yourself, are you sharing or are you selling? So are you, um, every single post that you make, are you constantly asking for something? Like, come join my group, come join my group, come join my group. Or are you saying, you know, for example, this was me, right? I went to a trainer once who gave me this meal plan that didn't include breads, crackers, pasta, chocolate, muffins, or fruits, sorry, no muffins, only protein, protein, protein bars and veggies, and had me lifting ridiculous amounts of weight. Again, right? 
I know there are people out there that are doing those ridiculous things. They think that they can't have uh, breads and they don't think they can have pasta and they can't have wine, right? So I'm putting in little plant, like planting little seeds, right? Uh, and then I share stuff that I'm eating, right? So always think about people that are trying these quick and easy things and how you can change your stories to attract them, to show them you're not doing anything that is unhealthy. You're actually doing something ridiculously amazing that would change their life. Um, and then I share my morning inspiration, right? Like I am constantly, I'm not asking for something. I'm just sharing what I'm doing. You ever meet a miserable person after workout? Nope, not me either. I used to work out because I hated my body. Um, now I work out because I love myself enough to treat my body properly. And I list the benefits of why I work out, right? It is not just for a number on the scale for me. And I make that very clear. And that's essentially the kind of people that I attract, right? But just constantly be sharing your journey. Sneak peeks into your life. So you have to be posting. And this is what I learned at my first summit, right? I went there and I was like, I'm nervous to talk about coaching. I don't want to offer sneak peek. I'm not qualified to do these things. I had no freaking clue, right? I didn't. It was essentially the blind leading the blind at that moment. But they said, if you're not offering it, somebody's going to go somewhere else. If you're not posting about it, if you're not offering coach sneak peeks, if you're not talking about it on a weekly basis, if you're not talking about why you love coaching so much or what it's done for you, then nobody's going to understand why you do it and nobody will join. So when I'm planning my coach sneak peek, the posts I do before are always geared towards my, my coach life, right? Little piece of heaven, sitting and enjoying breakfast with my little one, no morning rush. And I talk about things like that right? Prepping for a team call and how I can move my office wherever the heck I want. And this may be a challenge for people that aren't there yet, that are not doing this full time. But guys, there's so many things that you could be doing to share why you're doing coaching. And honestly, just fake it until you make it. And that was my mentality. Nobody knows what an emerald coach is or a diamond coach is or whether or not you're a top, top coach in the company. Nobody has a freaking clue how successful you are. So I honestly tell my team to just fake like you're a top coach, just pretend it. And eventually you'll start to believe it and you'll start to act like it and you'll start to post like it and people will start to believe you. And that is truly one of the best tips that I can possibly say, because I think coaches are so, um, they think that they have to get to a certain rank or they think they have to have a certain success. Talk about your um, challenge groups like they are like amazing, amazing things. Even if you have one person in it, who cares? They don't know, right? So it's not that you're lying. It's just you are attracting things, right? Like you're attracting people to you. So make sure that whatever you put out there, your enthusiasm, your excitement is there to draw people to you. Okay. So I'm constantly posting about coaching every single day. Actually, if you go to my page today, I always do them on Mondays, uh, Mondays because people go to work and they hate their jobs and they're, um, they're sitting in desks that are sucking the life from them, right? So I always post about coaching on Mondays, and I am always posting about coaching on Sundays too, but I always put little jabs every single day about my coaching life. Uh, the right hook. So 80% of the time you need to be adding value, not asking for anything. Then you can ask, okay? So sharing a before and after. So you need to share your story and make people feel something. And this is the one thing that I see coaches that don't do this enough. Uh, if I go to somebody's page and they're like, can you check my page? And I go and I scroll for like three seconds and I don't see anything that really connects me to them. I, I know that they like cats and I know that they like to share YouTube videos of funny people scaring other people, but I need to go to your page and see that you have something to offer me with the, within the first three seconds. Okay. If, if I don't see something, if I don't see a before and after picture, if I don't see some sort of inspiration or some story or some value, then you've lost me. Okay. So I am constantly sharing my story before and after pictures a few times a week. Okay. So you can share yours. You can share your challengers, uh, share a story before and after. And your, um, keep in mind that your, your transformation, if it's not there yet, it could be on the inside too right? It's one of the best transformations is something that you can't see. And that's hard to talk about in a picture, 
However, you can share that transformation of how you felt there, what you did, and how you feel now. So don't ever think that you can't share a transformation picture if you don't have a big visual transformation yet, okay? Um, not everyone will like and comment, but they will be watching and they will be reading. There needs to be a call to action when you share that story, okay? So if every Thursday night I share like a transformation or a face-to-face -face Friday or like a, a throwback or something like that, and I talk about how I was, what I did, where I am now, then I do a call to action at the end saying, if you need help or if you would like to join one of my groups, you can join, okay? You've probably heard all this stuff before, but it really is the exact same stuff. It's just that some people don't do it. They just sit there and they're hoarders of information. Okay, so again, there's my story, my before and after. How many success stories are you going to have to see and read until you make your own? At any given moment, you have the ability to say, this is not how my story goes. This, the old me, lost, hopeless, insecure, shy, unhealthy, unhappy. I tried every diet. Sharing a story, right? Life by design, just a girl who decided to go for it. Office for the day, lawn chair, laptop. I honestly was a brand new coach, I think, then, right? That was my first month. <laughs> and I just pretended, right? Like, I was just like, this is the best thing. And at that point, I was just like, I'm going to fake it until I make it. But that was the truth. I had my lawn chair out there, and I just, whatever, right? Dress for the job you want. It's crazy to think about all those things I was told over the years that were complete bull. Dress for the job you want, get a degree. The more experience you have, the better. Work your way up the ladder, and one day you'll make six figures and get five weeks vacation, I don't buy it. They had no idea I wasn't making six figures. I was probably making a hundred bucks then, right? But it was just, I was talking about kind of the life that I wanted and I visualized it, right? So start thinking about it in that way when you're sharing on your page. You can visualize your life and just like post about the things. It wasn't lying. It was just, I was living my life by design at that moment. I was, I was fired from a job who didn't have one to go to. So I just literally faked it until I made it. Your story. So you need to think about who you're serving, okay? What do they want from you? So I've talked about it before, but you need to have a person you're talking to in your post. My person is Christy. I know who Christy is I know what she feels like when she looks in the mirror. I know what she needs to hear from me every single morning. I know how she talks to herself when she gets dressed. I know she steps on the scale every single morning. I know she pinches her body fat and calls herself disgusting. I'm talking to Christy every single time that I'm posting. I also know that Christy is stuck in a job that sucks the life from her. She is um, just working and counting down the hours. She's missing out on her family's life. I'm I'm talking to her, okay? Think about who your avatar is and talk to that person. What do you love to teach, okay? Find something that you love to talk about. Uh, and I mean, like some people think, oh, I don't love cleaning, talking about cleaning. Well, don't talk about cleaning. Talk about, if you loved the exercise part, talk about that more. Or talk about, you know, if you love personal development, teach that, right? If you learn something through your personal development, teach that. But figure out what you love to teach and then share that on your page. Ask yourself what has happened in your life or what have you been through that could help them, okay? So everybody, and I, t I did a video today for my team and I was like, if you've never struggled in your life, then you are some magical unicorn that just dropped from the sky. Because every single person in this world has likely had a struggle in their life of some sort. Okay, whether that be you are um, insecure or picked on or went through a divorce or a separation or somebody you love died or you were depressed or anxious or felt like a shitty mom at one point or something, you have something in your life that has happened to you and you've likely overcome that at some point. You've been through it. You've dealt with it. I'm hoping that you've left all that stuff in the past and you've worked on yourself enough with personal development to get through it. Exercise, by the way, and sharing your story is really, really good therapy to get over those things, by the way. Um, what has happened in your life and what have you been through that could help other people? Okay, so it doesn't matter. And this is the one thing that I tell my team all the time is that so often we are caught up in us. We don't have time. Um, what will people think of me? I don't think I can do this. Um, I don't have the money. Uh, I can't, I don't know. I can't make good selfies or whichever. I don't want to do live videos. It's all you. So focused on your needs, how you feel, what's in it for you, your time. 
But if you shifted that and you thought about other people as like a service mindset, right? So I'm here to help somebody today and I don't care about my time. I'm going to actually invest my time into maybe talking to somebody who needs to hear what I have to say or that it's struggling. So don't think about, it's like you're too selfish in a sense. Like you almost have to get over yourself and stop thinking about your needs and think about other people's needs, okay? And ask yourself, what areas are you passionate about, okay? So that comes with time, like over my journey, like I wasn't, like I wasn't comfortable with ch uh, chatting on, um, you know, live videos or anything like that, but you'll find something that you love that to share that you're passionate about. And, you know, you need to talk about that. And I talk a lot to women that are like really stuck in their lives so that they were feeling like hopeless and lost and defeated. And I'm really passionate about paying that forward because I've been through that and I've actually healed myself through Beachbody. And that's why I'm so passionate about what I do is because Beachbody really changed my life. And it was coaching that really changed my life. And it was actually sharing my story and being 100% okay with myself and my past and my struggles and putting it out there as a means to inspire people that completely healed and, and, and changed my life. So I'm passionate about sharing coaching. I'm passionate about the products. I'm passionate about a lot of things, but you need to think about those things when you're sharing your stories on, on social media. The customer story. So 99% of the time you are inconsistent with the messaging to the public. Okay. So your stories are not placed in front of potential customers enough. Okay. So you're not dialed in or expressing the right words at the right time. And just because you post once on your Facebook page doesn't mean all 200 or 500 or 2000 of your friends see it. That's why you need to be consistent about constantly sharing your stories over and over and over and over again. If you're adding people to your network, it's the new people that haven't heard your stories, okay? They haven't seen your transformation pictures from last week, okay? So that's why you constantly have to be resharing them. It doesn't matter if, they, if your old friends have seen them. Eventually, they'll catch on that this is what you do. But I'm always posting for the new people that I'm adding in my content onto my network and that hasn't seen my content from two, two weeks ago or two months ago, okay? If you speak to everyone, you speak to absolutely no one. So again, you need to think about who your avatar is and talk to her. Okay, so you need to, to either write that down, um, talk to her, talk to that one specific person, and they will never believe your success until they believe your struggle. If, you, if I go to a coach's page and they are so, like, I get that we are, uh, we're supposed to be inspirational and we are supposed to help people, but life is not perfect. And if I go to a perfect page, I'll be like, you're full of it. Like you're completely full of it. And I don't connect with that. I just think that it cannot be sunshines and rainbows all the time. If you're struggling with something, share it. Okay. Because chances are somebody else is struggling with something. If I fall off the wagon in my nutrition and I fill my face with pizza and chicken wings, I actually share it and I hold myself accountable. Why? Because chances are 70, 80, 90% of my followers feel the exact same way. However, I will always turn it around and say, this is my plan of action. I fell, I did a face plant this weekend and I screwed up. It's why I don't have abs, right? I like wine, I like ice cream, I like chocolate too much and mini eggs and I eat those things, right? I'm not perfect and you don't have to be. However, you have to remember that people are following you and they are there to like, you have to use it as a means of inspiration. I'm not falling off the wagon every single day. I'm saying when it does, when it does happen and I have a bowl of like Captain Crunch for, for, for dinner, I may share that, right? But they will never believe your success until they believe your struggle. This is real life, okay? So the reason I started sharing me and my struggles and my heartaches and my setbacks was because I was stuck in a really bad place once. And as I scrolled the news feeds of everybody's happy, perfect highlight reels, I wanted to just scream because I just really wanted somebody that I could relate to and that said, you know what? I've been in your shoes. I get it. And it's not easy and it sucks sometimes. However, uh, most people are so focused on posting the highlight reels and thinking that they have to be perfect when in fact, they're probably faking it and they're probably, um, you know, they just share the highlights. 
I like to share everything about me, right? The good, the bad, the ugly, the real life stuff. Okay. So definitely um, show people that you struggle. It's not, you know, and any weight loss journey is like this. It is not like whoo, success. You will never have a 365 day perfect year of your workouts and cleaning. You just won't. Um, and if you do, then I'd really like to meet you because I've never met somebody like that. Okay, so a goal without a plan is just a wish, okay? So a dream written down with a date becomes a goal. Every single month, like I said, write down a goal with a deadline. If your goal is to become an emerald, which you should be, um, write it down and attach a deadline to it, okay? You know to become an emerald coach, you have to hit success club. You have to be talking to people. You have to be stepping outside of your comfort zones. If you want to be diamond, you better be hitting success club five or 10, and you need to be getting outside of your comfort zones. You need to be talking to people, inviting, do live videos, do some scary, scary stuff, okay? Um, and break it down into steps, okay? So a plan backed by an action makes your dreams come true, okay? So every single month, I have a marketing strategy and I have my goals written down, obviously success club, my rank, business, everything that I need. My calendar is planned ahead in advance. So I, t I, I schedule my healthy eating group, which I do, every I've done a free healthy eating group every single month for two plus years, whether or not I've had one person in it or a hundred people in it, okay? I, I still run it because I've grown organically, okay? So I, um, I get people into my network, I run a clean eating group every single month, I build relationships with those people, okay? My goal is to hit Success Club by the 15th. With, um, that way I don't have to worry about it, but that's my goal every single month. Uh, I think I have a YouTube video on there about running a free healthy eating group if you want it, but a lot of coaches, um, they try something once, and because it wasn't, it didn't work or they didn't have enough people or it was too much work for what they did, they're not successful. Guys, I've put in a lot of hours and a lot of time creating free groups and it was just a complete, I'm like, well, that was kind of a waste of my hard work. However, I still ran them and I still posted about them. Okay. So I've been consistent and that's the beauty of the compounding thing effect. Don't just do something once and because it doesn't work, stop, do it again and do it again and run coach sneak peeks on your own. And like you can seriously run coach sneak peeks on your own. And when I started, I literally just Googled like YouTube videos from other coaches. And I was like, okay, well this sounds good. I'm just gonna put this in. You can share videos until you are confident in making your own coach sneak peeks. That's, that's literally what I did, like sharing YouTube videos. Um, and then plan and post according to your goals. So work from a list every single day. So I do my free clean eating group. I'll do my challenge group because usually I'll talk to people in my free group and then I'll put a plant, a plan to seed about my challenge groups. And then after my challenge groups, I plan my coach sneak peeks. And then it's just like rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. It's always the exact same every single month. I schedule my tasks. Okay. So my posts, my invites you need to do, um, on specific days. So, I do it. So usually I talk in my challenge groups. I talk in my challenge groups about coaching and I talk in my challenge groups about, you know, my next sneak peek and I talk about my next groups that are starting. Okay. So like this month I did, I did my regular challenge group, but then I decided to do a bikini boot camp and do the 22 minute hardcore program. So then I'm like selling more challenge packs to existing customers or upgrading them to the all access pack with another program they can go into. So don't just think about um, getting new people all the time too. Like if you have people that you've been working with, like think about ways you can re-engage them in their own journeys and things you could be offering them to get them going again. Because sometimes all it takes is one more program or a different program to get them going and they become an amazing coach, right? It's not a one size fits all, but you do um, need to follow up with them. So always, always, and I do this every single, uh, every single week, I follow up with every single person in my challenge groups on Monday and I message them or I'll voice note them. I'll check in with them. I always am in my challenge groups because that is where it starts. Okay. If you're running shitty challenge groups, you're done. Okay. If you just, you need to over deliver in those groups, 1 million percent. Okay. So you need to be showing up. You need to be doing your workout every single day. If you're a coach and you're not doing your workout and not posting a sweaty selfie, how do you expect your challengers to do those things? If you're not posting your Shakeology pictures, how do you expect your retention rate on Shakeology to be? Okay. If you're not like being a product of the product, you're not going to be helping people. Okay. So follow up with them. 
I use, I also use a, I use Google Streak actually to track who I've talked to. So if you need a good tracking system, I use Google Streak. And uh, you can Google, you can YouTube, that was something I learned, YouTube it. And I email every single person. So when I get their email address to enroll them, I always email, I mass email every single person too. And I check in on them. I'll say, hey, how's it going? Just checking in on you in case you didn't see my Facebook posts. I tell them about the 25% discount. I give them the options. I tell them about I'm accepting 10 new coaches to work on my team constantly, okay? Uh, so think, think, back to, uh, think about back to school, football season, Halloween, Christmas. What are people struggling and how can you add value? So think about, you know, so right now it's June. So summer's coming, right? You know, bikini season's coming. You have products to offer them, okay? So it's going to be like barbecue season. Could you offer a free group on like clean eating barbecue season or like something that's going to add value to their life, okay? So always think about the seasons and what you have to offer them. And your challenge group. So non-negotiable every single month, okay? So I've ran a challenge group every single month. Um, a lot of coaches, they just, you know, and this is what I hate. This is the one thing I hate. And I'm very selective, actually, of the people that I, I just don't sign coaches up, to be honest. I don't. Um, they have to be in my challenge group, and I have to see that they're in it for the right reasons. If they um, are in it just for money, if they are actually not posting in my challenge groups or posting their selfies or being inspirational to other people, I'll be like, chances are you're probably not going to be a really good coach if you're not showing up to my challenge group, okay? So I'm very selective of who I want to work with because I want good quality coaches, not just coaches that are going to fly the coop next month because they're not working. They need to be invested. They need to be a transformational coach and committed to helping people, okay? Um, and if you're not a transformational coach, if you're thinking of the big bucks, and if you're thinking of you know, just making commission sales and all that kind of stuff, it's probably not going to work out for you either. Um, and I'll tell you, even to this day, two years later, I don't even know how much I make on a commission sale. I don't, I don't go in my online office and check my commissions. I don't go and check my success club points. I'm not focused on those things. I simply get up and I say, okay, what can I add about who can I add value to today? I'm excited. I'm just going to post selfies all day. Like that's my job. Okay. So, um, but my challenge groups are non-negotiable every single month. I'm invested. The coaches that are in there, the new coaches that start up, they leave the nest right away, okay? So they pick a date and they run one. If you're a coach and you haven't picked a challenge group date yet, and you've been a coach for three, four months, you need to pick a date like yesterday and you need to just start posting, okay? You need to honestly leave the nest because the coaches that do not leave the nest will never get off the ground. They won't fly, right? You need to, so I will allow my coaches in my challenge groups for one month, kind of like an apprentice, right? So they, if they don't have enough to run their own group, they come in mine and then they leave the nest, right? They, they get enough people to go and then they pick a date and they run. And that's, that's the reality, okay? You're a business owner. You're the CEO of your own business, okay? It's not your coach's job to tell you how to run your business or to do the work for you or to tell you to get on team calls. You need to leave the nest, okay? And you need to start thinking like a business owner. Um, it is a successful group if you turn one challenger into a coach, okay? So if you have, you know, five people and you recruit one coach, it's a successful group. Successful group. If you have um, an amazing transformation, like somebody lost weight, that's a good successful group. And post about it. Like get excited and share, you know, your success from challengers. Like just post selfies and say, oh my gosh, it's weigh-in day and so-and-so lost like 15 pounds or whichever, right? Like talk about it, plant seeds about what you're actually doing behind the scenes because people don't get that. Uh, be consistent even when no one's showing up, guys. Uh, you may have crickets in your group, okay? But you're going to have to um, be confident in what you're doing. You're a leader, okay? So you show up, there's no days off, okay? You show up, even when you don't feel like it, you show up. Okay, this is your business. And if you took out a $450,000 business loan to open up a McDonald's, you would bust your butt every single day because you just wasted, you have a debt of $450,000. You Right now you have a coaching fee of 20 bucks and you buy your breakfast, okay? And most people don't even show up for that. And you could turn this little business into a million dollar business, okay? 
but people don't think of it that way, right? Show up even on the days that you don't feel like it. Your live videos, your daily posts, okay? Post about coaching so you can do so many sneak peeks into your life with, with your selfies, okay? In your challenge groups, like just you could talk about, you know, your life as a coach or why you love coaching or, you know what, like I wasn't, it's amazing that I'm a coach. Like if it wasn't for coaching, I wouldn't be working out because it keeps me accountable. Like you need to start even planting tiny seeds into the coach life in your challenge groups. So like I said, weekly check-ins, voice notes are great for people. Even when you're talking to people, you know, telling them about the program, they can see your enthusiasm when you're talking about voice notes, okay? Invite, talk about upcoming programs, discounts, sales. I always talk about a three-day refresh in my challenge groups. I talk about um, the discount. I talk about upcoming programs that are coming out. All those sorts of things. I'm talking about those in my challenge groups because that is how I've built my business. It's all been from challenge groups and hitting success club. Go back into your old groups if you brand some <coughs> and check in with old challengers, okay? So a lot of coaches just like, oh, they're a discount coach and I never have to worry about them or they don't check in on them in their own fitness journey, okay? So go back in and see like, who haven't I heard from and how are they doing and check in on them, okay? Provide options. So at the end, I'm like, okay, do you want to continue on? Do you want to try a new program? Try coaching and then follow up with them. And then you can ask for referrals too. Okay. So if they know of anybody, even when somebody's signing up for your challenge, you're like, say you sold one challenge pack. Ask them, say, do you have a friend or family that would want to join with you? Like just, if you don't ask them, they won't ever um, even think about that. And just say, oh, it's way, it's, it's more fun if you have somebody, um, you know, doing it with you. So ask them if they have people they could, um, they could refer to you and do it anyways. So be the success you want to attract. Okay. So again, like I said, like fake it until you make it act like the coach you want to be like, act like the top coach you want to be. Okay. Confidence. You can have confidence. Okay. It is just a decision and you can simply um, decide that you're going to put yourself out there and start being 100% yourself. It takes a lot of work, but it's, it's, it's doable. You need to be fearless. You need to be, you need to have determination and you not, you need to sacrifice some time, right? Like you need to allow yourself patience, but even like coaches that say, Oh, I'm, I'm all in. And then I go to like, they're all in. Okay. So they're, they're, they really want this. They really want this. And then it's like, Oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to bed or I'm, I can't get on a team call or I'm sorry, I can't do that. Or, you know, like you see they want it or they're going to like paint nights with their friends every single weekend. And I'm like, I sacrificed a tremendous amount of my time to build a business because I wanted to bring my husband home if it meant not going out with the girlfriends on a Friday night, I'm like, sorry, this is literally the only time I have to work. And I will have a ton of time to go out with you when I'm successful, right? You need to sacrifice some things. And so many people will not sacrifice. If you, if you talk to the top coaches, so like I'm sure Melanie Mitchell, Lindsay Matway, Jen Wall, Jamie Fitzpatrick, they sacrifice some time now, but now they're laughing, right? So be the person that will sacrifice time. Don't let doubt creep in or compare yourself to other people's success. It will truly squash you guys. If you are scrolling people and you're wasting your time reading other quotes, like you shouldn't even be reading my stuff. If you're wasting your time creeping people or, um, you know, comparing yourself to other coaches, or you think that it's not possible for yourself, you're going to, um, a, really feel defeated. It's going to rob you of a lot of joy in your life. And it's actually going to paralyze you from growth in your business. So if you have to unfollow coaches, unfollow them, but definitely, um, think about the time that you're wasting reading other people's content and be like, Oh, they're great. You should be so busy consumed with your own learning and your own business that you don't have time for other stuff right? Like just be head down, um, focused on what you need to do 24 seven, whatever it takes. I remember when I was building my website, I was like, I'm going to stay up all night if it takes me to do this. And there was times where I literally had like two hours of sleep, but I sacrificed it because I knew that I wanted to be successful. Um, be creative. Okay. Your job is not to duplicate anybody. Your job is not to be me. It's not to copy somebody else. It is to be your true self and people will relate to you. Okay. Being creative. Um, you need to ask yourself, like, 
what, how am I different from other people? Because there's a lot of coaches and there are a lot of people that just post selfies and post their workout pictures. And I'm a beach body coach and this is that, and it gets to be boring, right? It's just like, Oh, same, same, same. Ask yourself how you can be creative different from somebody else. Okay. Um, again, it's, we all do the same stuff. It's just like, if you go to other coaches pages, like the top 10 coaches, everybody has a different feel. Okay. You're, you can't be a copycat in this business. Uh, draw a line in the sand. Just decide. Seriously, just decide. You cannot be um, kind of half in, kind of half out. I just decided I was going to be successful and there was no reason for a plan B because coaching was my plan A. And I actually turned down a full-time job just after I got fired. And I was like, if I take this job, then I'm giving myself a way out. And if I take this... I'm not going to have enough time to work on my business. So I literally put myself between, it was like a do or die situation. I could have taken a job and I could have went and worked 40 hours and made a full-time income. However, I was committed. I was like, I'm going to be successful and I will do whatever it took. And my family's life was on the line. Their, their vitality was on the line, right? So I did whatever it took and your vibe really matters. Okay. So think about it. Like if I go to your page and it's just like, Pictures are not good, they're grainy, they're poor lighting, they're, you know, like you're just kind of complaining all the time, or you're not happy, or you're not smiling, or you're not enthusiastic. Chances are nobody's feeling that way when they're reading your post. So your vibe truly does matter, and your energy does matter when you're posting on your Facebook page. Call to action. So this is your um, this is your task. Okay, um, get a calendar. So plan out your month. Okay, so plan out June, plan out July. Pick a date for your challenge group if you haven't ran one yet, and say I'm going to have five people in that challenge group, and I will do whatever it takes to get five people. If I have to stay up late and message a hundred people, I will do that. Okay, so you need to plan out your month. Write down your monthly goals at the top, like big goals. Okay. So not like emerald by, you know, summit because you could be diamond by summit. Okay. Like big goals. I signed, I went all in as a coach in March, March 26th. Summit was in July and I messaged Jen Wall actually. And I'm like, okay, well give me your best tips. Like I need to know what I need to do. And she said, set big goals. And I said, okay, I'm going to be diamond by summit. And I was diamond like three weeks later. Okay, so you need to honestly set some big goals and then work according to your goals. If your goal is to be diamond by summit, then don't go out on a Friday night or don't go out on a Saturday night. Say no to something so that you can work your business. Trust me, you'll get all that time back, okay? So now, because I've done that, I'm laughing. I have all day. If I want to take a day off or you know, go get my hair done in the middle of the day or take my kids to a movie during the day, I could do those things, okay? Short-term sacrifice for a long-term gain. Um, each night before bed, write your must-dos for the following day, okay? So I've got a list before I go to bed, and I'm like, okay, this is stuff that I need to accomplish today, and I'm going to work from this list, okay? Up your personal development, seriously, do that. Uh, I always listen to personal development first thing in the morning. So YouTube, I listen to motivational videos, success videos, like Tony Robbins, all that kind of stuff. So up it, like start listening to that. Go back and follow up with old challengers and check in. So build relationships, be confident, okay? Just fake it, honestly, until you make it. You'll eventually become super confident and you won't care what other people think of you. Just be confident in what you're doing and know that you're doing something that's helping people. You're not actually hurting anybody. Okay. And if you are struggling with what people think of you or fear or having anxiety or those sorts of things, that's stuff that you need to work on, right? Because it is not fun living a life. If you're scared to do something you really want to, like if you really want to do coaching and you're being held back because you're scared of what your neighbor may think or what your cousin Susie may think, then, that, then you're not really living your life. You're living somebody else's life, right? And you're trapped and you're stuck based on the opinions of other people. And it truly is a prison. So you need to break through from that. Determine what, pa what topic you're passionate about, who your audience is, what does your audience want, um, and what um, have you been through or have learned that can help them. And hit success club. So what is it? It's 
Mar it's June, which I don't even know what day. That's a, the that's a thing when you work from home and you don't have like a set schedule, you're like, I don't even know what day of the week it is. But you have a ton of time. Like if you can't help three people in a month, you have all those people, it's chances are your message is not getting in the right in, in front of the right people at the right time. Your pictures are not um, scroll stopping enough. You're not adding value. There's so many things that you could be doing. You need to do a reality check and ask yourself, like, are you working hard enough to get those success club points? So when I say like I hit success club 92, I literally didn't sleep that month because my family's life depended on it. And if you think that, okay, if I work as if my family's life depends on it and my goal is to hit success club five, then you'll get there. But you also need to be patient. This business doesn't magically grow itself and it won't grow if you quit and throw in the towel. And if you quit and throw in the towel, then chances are you're probably going to have some regrets. And I don't know about you, but I just didn't want to be that person that got down, you know, three, four, five years from now and said like, what, what would have happened if I just went all in and gave it my all for like three years and stuck it out long term? Um, I don't know about you guys, but like 40 years is a long time to be stuck in a job, you know, counting down the days till 4.30, asking for time off, having the life sucked out of you and waiting for Friday and having the blues on Monday. Like that is a long time to live. And if you don't love what you're doing in your job, then that should be why enough. That should be your why to get you going and get you up early and out of bed. Okay. So don't settle. Just hit success club. And I promise you that your business will start to compound over time. So Casey, that's all I have. <laughs> Sorry, I rambled on for a long time, but. Oh, hold on. Do you want me to switch you over? I'll switch you over. Where are you? Okay, there you go. Oh, perfect. Oh, that was awesome. 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 I have like a full page of notes. Um, I'm, I appreciate how real you are and just how like get to the point. And like, I'm speaking for everybody on this call. I think like just such good content and just so real. And I love the fact that it's not a secret to success. It's just that you are willing to outwork everybody else. Mm -hmm. There's no secret. You just freaking outwork everybody else. And it just goes to show like, there is no, there's no different system for anybody in this business. It's just some people are literally willing to do the small things and or the big things, I guess, you know, <laughs> I like sleep. They're easy. They're easy to uh, do, right? They're very, very simple to do. It's just most people don't, right? It's so simple to not do it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, do you guys, does anybody have any questions really quick? I'm not going to keep um, Lynn's too long because baby and work, but if you guys have any questions, you can post them. Um, my only question is like personal development. What are some books that you recommend for new coaches? Like what do you have your new coaches start with for personal development? So they always like, you know, the usual, like you are a badass is a good one. Um, what other one did I like? The 10 X is really good. I, um, I listen to that on YouTube. So if you don't have it, you can listen to that. Um, the slight edge is really good to listen to that one on, um, like audible or whichever. I also loved what girl code is actually one of my favorite ones. That's a really, really good book. It's an easy read. Uh, mastering your mean girl is another one. So I think that's the biggest thing with a lot of coaches is that they really are just holding themselves back by their own insecurities and they need to get over that. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. I've read, I've totally read all those books and I love them all so much. Um, yeah. if you liked mastering your mean girl, um, uh, spirit junkie. Oh yeah. Gabrielle Bernstein. Her name is Gabrielle Bernstein and all of her stuff is so good. It's very, very similar and yeah, she's just like yeah. super badass. And, uh, on audible, she reads her own stuff. I think you oh, really? Yeah. She's really, really good. You know what other one I loved is the uh, Mel Robbins, the five second rule. Have you heard mm -hmm. that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've yeah, that's that really one. good too, the five second rule. And then the other one was find your, um, find your extraordinary. It's the, the lady that is uh, Stella and Dot. She's actually really good. That's actually a really good book too. I've heard that. I don't find know. Your extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah, it's, what is it? Hold on, I have it right here. 
this is like I this was like my nightly addiction. So I like would go up to bed early to read this. But it's like find your um, extraordinary, dream bigger, live happier, and achieve success on your own terms. Jessica Delula Heron. She's That's really awesome. she's a creator of Stella and Dot. So it's another network marketing company. But she, uh, yeah, really good book. That's wicked. Um, and one last question for you: What does your day look like? Like a typical, like no bullshit, like a typical day for you, what does it look like? What time do you get up? Like what time are you working until? And like, how do you organize your day? What does it typically look like for you? Before baby or after? <laughs> right now it's like, well, like literally it's honestly, I'm flying by the seat of my pants right now. Oh, with yeah. a, right. But <laughs> I still get up. So I still get up. Even if I'm up in the middle, of the night, I still set my alarm for fo- like four thirty, five 5 o'clock. I get up, I do, I go downstairs, I have my energized. I do my morning post, then I literally, I get up, I shower, hopefully the kids have, are still in bed, and then I get them off to school, and then I start to work from like 9 till 11 during na- like Elliot's nap time right now, and then I will literally um, like scramble. So anytime that she's not sleeping, I'm with her, and then when she is sleeping, I'm like working, 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 and then when the kids go down for bed, I'm again working. So I'll probably stay up like now I'm staying up till probably midnight just to get some stuff done. Cause I've literally worked an hour today, but when I was home full time, my day was like working, like it was my job, right? Like I clocked in, I clocked out and I still worked in the evening, but it's like right now it's scrambling. There's a lot on the go. Right. But my main focus is always my challenge groups. It's always getting challengers in. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I can't believe you can function on four hours of sleep. I think I would die. I think I would shrivel up and die. I take some naps. I take some naps during the day, but yeah. You have to. Yeah. You're amazing. Oh, that's crazy. Um, okay. Well, I won't keep any more of your time then because that call was like, oh my God, I can't even tell you. I can send you the recording if you want to put it up in like your, your team pages or anything. Um, I'll throw it up on YouTube as well. I really appreciate you doing this. I took so much from it. I know everyone on this. It was just an incredible call. So I won't keep any more of your time. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate you and I will talk to you soon. Okay, thank you. Good night, guys.